So, here's what happens. Back to monetary policy. Sometimes the Fed buys bonds. Let's think of it as I'm the Fed and you're the banks. And I come buy your bonds. And I can give you a high enough price, you'll, you'll sell them. When I buy those bonds from you, the bank, what happens to the money supply? You have more money, remember? You gave me the bond, I gave you the money. So I have increased the money supply, which causes interest rates to do what? Yeah. To fall, and causes aggregate demand, total spending, to increase. That's a stimulatory policy. You with me so far? So what have we shown so far? Three different ways to stimulate the economy through money, monetary policy. You with me? Everybody tracking? A little nod once in a while? Right? Yeah. Sure, man. Okay, no, don't do that. <laughs> Instead of stimulatory policy, we may have restrictive policy or contractionary policy. These are interchangeable terms. Or tight, rather than easy, tight monetary policy. These are policies that will cause a decline in aggregate demand. What would you have to do to reserve ratios or reserve requirements to curtail or shrink aggregate demand? Increase it. Increase it. And all the arrows go in the opposite direction. Okay? Discount rate, same thing. You raise the discount rate, you reduce the money supply, you raise interest rates, and you reduce aggregate demand. Pretty simple. What do you have to do as the Fed? What do you have to do in the open market where these bonds are bought and sold? You have to sell bonds. If I, the Fed, go in the market and I sell bonds, I sell them to you, the banks. What do you give me in return? Money. So you now have less money when you charge higher interest rates and you dampen aggregate to me. Okay, so far? You want to know those? <coughs> They're pretty straightforward. This one rarely changes. It's hugely powerful. We don't know how powerful it really is because we don't use it that much. Discount rate changes three, four, five, six times a year. We, we watch every time the open market committee meets, we watch what they're talking about, and then this, these operations of buying and selling bonds are going on all the time. And when the, remember the Federal Open Market Committee? Check question, how many people sit on the Federal Open Market Committee? Twelve? Or fourteen? Or seven? Twelve. Twelve. Seven people from the Board of Governors, the President of the New York Fed, and four other Federal Reserve Bank presidents on a rotating basis. Okay? The Open Market Committee meets every six to eight weeks, and they decide we're going to sell more bonds, buy more bonds. How much? What's our goal? So you want to pay attention to what they're doing, because if they're out there messing with interest rates, you want to know what's happening before you buy a house, whether interest rates are going to go down or up, before you invest in a new business, et cetera, et cetera. Now, there are two other tools the Fed has that it can use to influence the level of economic activity. These two tools are called, are called qualitative tools. They don't change the quantity of money out there. They change something else. The first tool is margin requirements. You remember what margin meant? We used it before. What is margin? Where have you heard the term margin? The buy on margin. The buy stocks, remember that? Leading into the Great Depression, to buy stocks on credit, on margin. What was the margin requirement back in 1929, early 29? 10%. 10%. Put up 10%, broker loans you 90%, buy your stock, become a millionaire, hell, it's easy. The Fed sets the margin requirements. What happened with 10% margin requirements? Over speculation, a bubble, and then a collapse. Margin requirements today, 50%. So 
so you people don't go crazy on me. Right? The Fed can change this. We're not sure how big an impact it would have on the economy, but we know that if they raise this to 80%, what would happen? You would curtail uh, investments, and you would slow the economy down. We just don't know how much. The other policy they have is called jawboning. Jawboning. How's your biblical history? You ever heard the phrase, and he slew them with the jawbone of an ass? <laughs> who slew who with the jawbone of an ass? Samson and the Philistines? Okay. What is the jawbone of an ass? What does it look like? It's like it looks like an axe Here's where the jaw hinges, so it drops down. And so the jawbone looks kind of like this. This is where the teeth are. Your jawbone is that way. Anybody here deer hunt? How do you age a deer? I don't age it. How do you tell the age of a deer? Oh, his teeth. Pull his jawbone out to look at it. Yeah. Say again? See if his back is different or not. See if his back's different or not. How big do you suppose the jawbone of an ass, a donkey, is? Figure about like that. About that. About that big around at the, at the heavy part. Okay. If you took the jawbone of that ass and you laid it out in the sun for a couple of weeks and let the ants eat all the meat off of it and let it dry out. And then you took yourself a strip of leather, maybe a half inch wide, soaked the leather in water and wrapped that leather around this end of the jawbone and then let it dry. What do you have now? A deadly weapon. Exactly right. You've got a jawbone. Anybody gives you any garbage, you beat the hell out of it. Okay? What does this have to do with monetary policy? <laughs> I've been very patient, haven't you? To jawbone is to threaten. It's to hold up that jawbone and say, give me your money. Do what I said. Okay? The Federal Reserve, and in particular the chairman, can threaten, and it's a credible threat. Suppose the chairman of the Federal Reserve, who is that? Ben Bernanke. Okay. Suppose Ben Bernanke came on TV tomorrow, and it's a different world, and, and inflation is at 12%. And he's thinking, i got to bring down inflation. So he comes on TV and he says, I've been meeting with the Board of Governors and the Open Market Committee. We've been talking about things, and we think inflation is just too high. And I, I want to issue a sort of a plea for help and a caution to American businesses. You've got to stop raising your prices. You've got to stop helping this inflation along. You're killing the economy. And if you can't stop raising prices, I'll do something about it. What can you do about it? Shorten the money supply, drive interest rates through the roof. None of your customers can afford to buy what you're selling your business goes down to tubes. Now, is that a credible threat? Can he carry, carry through on it? Yeah. Oh, hell yes. All he's got to get is get one. Three other guys on the board, take him out for a couple of beers, and they can come to an agreement. So if Bernanke comes on, and maybe he does it a different way, this has happened in the past too, he says, one of the problems we're having in our economy is unions are demanding higher and higher and higher wages, and that's causing businesses to have to raise prices, and it's causing inflation that none of us can stand. So I'm here to ask for help from the, from the unions. Stop with these demands for higher wages. You're killing the economy. What's he saying underneath all of that? Chill. Chill. Either stop asking for higher wages, or I will crash the economy and cost you your damn job. Is that a credible threat? Absolutely. Really, he's willing to crash the entire economy. I, I'm using an extreme to, to make a point. I'm just saying he can slow down that growth rate of the economy to where suddenly unemployment needs to rise. He can affect what's going on. He can affect what's going on with me and you in our daily lives, and how long will it take him to do it? A week or two? 
But they didn't say, not like going through Congress, you know. In 1979, they done it repeatedly. And they yes. did cross the economy. Well, Volcker yeah. did raise interest rates up because of high inflation. But the inflation at that time wasn't being caused by businesses raising prices or by unions raising wages. It was caused by oil prices overseas. And we'll come into that probably Monday next week, uh, Wednesday next week. What do we say about Monday next week? No. Don't get over here and come to class unless you like being alone. <laughs> Good. All right. These are the tools of monetary policy. Imagine some of the questions, and if you want to, if you're going to have a study group, make up questions about this. How would you make up a multiple choice question about some of this stuff? Say again? Well, that's the essay question. <laughs> Explain how to make a weapon out of a donkey's jawbone. Bring one in. Bring one in. Okay. <laughs>